Welcome to the Critique Cutis, I'm the Monk, and today we are in Age of Wonders 4. And this video is going to be concentrating on our city builds and what we should be looking at when we very first start the game. And of course, if this is the kind of content that you want to see, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We also have an active and grind Discord, guys. So if you're struggling in your game and want some tips or maybe just other people to chat to, um, the link for that is down in the description. Now, the first city you start with in the game is your throne city, and this will be your most important city throughout your entire game. Bear in mind, you can actually change and transfer your throne city, but it is the city that you want to give the most attention to, especially if you don't plan on doing that. Now, this is one of my cities quite late into a game. So let's let's move now to a city from turn one. Now, there are seven different resources that your throne city can actually get you and you can modify throughout your game. The first three resources being food production and draft. Then you have gold, mana, knowledge, and imperium. Now, the first three relate to your actual city. No matter how much food that we have or how much draft or production, that only helps us for our first city, our other city that it's actually about. The last four are empire bonuses that you can use throughout the game on any city. Food is one of the first things you should be concentrating on, whether it is building provinces with food or whether it is building buildings to have more food or, of course, making an empire that can acquire more food. Because the more food we have, the quicker our population number rises. And, of course, the more our population number rises, the more provinces we're able to expand to. And you need to be able to pop off multiple provinces um, very, very quickly because certain buildings need, like, for instance, two forestries or four quarries or mines to be built in order for you to be able to build the more powerful late game buildings. So focusing down so that way we can make sure that we get a good population boost as we go through is a really, really good idea. Now, one thing I would also know is that you can actually increase your population by spending your Imperium. And again, on a side note, when it comes to province expansion, I would typically prioritize the provinces that have an extra build, for instance. Like right here, we have a pasture, so we're going to naturally get an extra 10 food per turn if we settle here. It doesn't matter what building we get here, because that province improvement is right there. Just like right here, we have a gold vein. So it doesn't matter if we put a farm down or not. This gold vein will be here, giving this us our passive income. Now, when it comes to actually spending your Imperium to increase your population, I wouldn't say it's a bad thing at all. What I would say is the longer it's going to take you for your next population pop, the more Imperium it's going to cost you to force that growth. Next up, we have production. Now, production is used for basic building and how much time it's going to take you in order to build whichever building you're trying to build. The more production that you have, the quicker you're able to build the buildings that you're trying to build. So, for instance, if we go in, we can see that these buildings take x amount of turns well that turns is based on the raw production value you're able to put out per turn so if we see this building will cost us 250 production and that's going to take us six turns in order to build that blacksmith and if we increase our production it's going to be pretty quick personally making sure that you put production high on your priority list is a great idea because especially if you focus in the first 20 turns of your 
um, of your game, making sure you pump out that production late game you're going to be able to absolutely plow through all the high tier buildings this game has to offer you i think on one of my best goes i managed to get 250 production within 15 turns which meant i was able to build the highest rank of town hall super super quick Next up, we have draft, and of course, draft works very much like production. The amount of draft we have determines on how quickly we can actually train troops. Now, unless you're planning to plow out a lot of troops extremely quickly, draft isn't something you need to focus on so much in the early game. Unless, of course, you are going down that, down that military route. But if you do, there are perks and magic and other things you can kind of focus on in order to get yourself and acquire yourself more troops and draft. Having a high draft late game, especially in a game that you're not going for a magic victory, is a great idea, but not something you need to prioritize in the first you know, few turns of your game. I'd also mention that having a lot of troops is going to cost you a lot of upkeep as well. If you have physical troops, sword and shield type troops, that is going to cost you gold. And if you have magical troops, that is going to cost you mana. Next up, we have gold. This is one of the first universal resources that we're going to be talking about. The amount of gold you produce per turn can be used across your entire kingdom. So having cities set up that are just solely trying to produce gold is a great idea because it can be used for absolutely everything in this game. Whether it is the straight upkeep of your troops itself or rushing buildings and rushing troops you also need to use gold in order to purchase the building plans themselves some of these things are astronomical in building price like 800 pounds for the tier 4 town hall so you're gonna need a lot of gold going forward Making sure you build buildings like market to boost your per turn gain in gold is a great idea. I'd also note that you can only rush one building per turn no matter how much gold you actually have. That's the same for troops as well. You can only rush one troop per turn as well. So you can't just pump out 10 troops at a time like an entire army or of course several buildings. But believe me when I say no matter how much gold you have, it's never going to be enough. You're always going to find another use for it. Now that can also be said with mana, especially if you're going down the magical route. If you're trying to get that magic victory, you're probably never going to have enough mana. It can be used for so much in your game, including casting both on world and in combat. Some of these spells, especially end game spells, cost an awful lot of mana. So you're going to need to have a stockpile. Luckily, a lot of my games, I seem to feel that I can go a long time without using very much mana. So by the time I get into my mid to late game, I've got a good stockpile ready. Unless, of course, I'm going down that magic route for my army, in which case it costs mana just to keep those troops alive. Next up, we have knowledge. Knowledge is your basic research within this game. You research through your times, through the technology. The more knowledge you can acquire, there are perks you can pick up to help this, but the more knowledge that you can acquire, the quicker you're going to plow through your tomes, the quicker you're going to get new spells and new researches and, of course, more tomes. And if you're going for that magic victory and you want to get there before anyone else, you're going to have to double down on knowledge as soon as you can. And lastly, we have our Imperium. Now, Imperium, we actually get from the get-go. You never have to really invest too much in, in Imperium because you do get a decent amount every single turn from the get-go, regardless of whether you invest in it or not. However, Imperium can be used for so much when it comes to settling new cities, vassalizing, 
unlocking new perks or of course as we've already said rushing our population you're never really going to have too much imperium so if you find a building that you're able to get rather quickly then grab it up if it gives you more imperium because the earlier you get your hands on it the more you're able to do with it i would also make a note that a little bit of forethinking can be so useful in this game certain buildings are locked if you don't have certain requirements like for instance a lot of the troops until you actually level up your town hall or research the correct tomes you're not going to get the brand new better troops now some of these buildings take a long time to research however as you can see my town hall is actually boosted because i am over um, the population it says that I should have for it so certain buildings have certain requirements for different boosts making it so much cheaper for you to build and of course quicker for you to build as well and just like some buildings can have boosts some other buildings have a requirement so for instance I need to have a set amount of quarries in order to build this building I don't have those quarries, therefore I'm not allowed to build this even though I have the technology to. So when a new building does pop up that you can possibly build, taking a few seconds just to read the requirements, read what could possibly be done in order to boost that project is a really good idea, a great time saver, and of course it will save you both money and resources as well. But there we have it guys, that is a quick breakdown of your main city, what you should possibly be aware of when starting your game. Like I said, I would focus on population and food for the first few turns in your game and then shift that focus to production. Production can be used for so many things and it will seriously help your late game as well. Now, all that being said, when it comes to empire and faction customization there are so many options and you have so many things that can help you like for instance get you more gold get you more production get you more food from the very off so try and take into account what your population what your faction actually strive off and of course, if you have any questions or anything you want to add, let me know down in the comments. Do my very best to answer every single one of you. Failing that, we do have that active and growing Discord as well. The link is down in the description. It'd be great to have more people that are playing Age of Wonders in the server. But until next time, I've been a Mark, we've been a Chrissy Kudos, and I will see you in the next video real soon. Until then, take it easy and happy gaming.